Um, we thought we'd talk probably for about 30 minutes, we'll see. Um, I'm going to talk, uh, I'm going to start um, by talking about our approach to the research, and then I'm going to speak about some of the findings, but particularly with regard to legal recognition and the experiences of homophobia that the young people spoke about. The quotes that I'm going to be uh, presenting are from the Voices of Children participants. And then I'm going to hand over to Connor and Christine, and they're going to speak about their positive experiences of their families and the people who've made a difference in their lives. And that includes um, their friends, their teachers, members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgendered community that we'll refer to as LGBT uh, from now on. And they're also going to talk about the Believe in Equality organisation, which they've established. Voices of Children is based on a very simple idea, to bring together adult children of LGBT parents, to talk about their experiences and then to hear and, and report those. The group of 11 participants, seven female and four male, aged between 18 and 24, came from their homes around Ireland in November last year to meet together for a one day uh, workshop in the UNICEF offices in Dublin. We were very aware of the innovative character of the, the research, and so we've written about the study's rigorous methodological approach and also included its ethical protocol within the report. As has been said, the study doesn't claim to be representative of the experiences of all children of LGBT parents in Ireland, but we do feel it's generated very rich and deep information about these children's lives in contemporary Ireland. And it's also outlined a thematic agenda to be addressed in future research policy, services and wider society. The themes that have been identified are the considerable diversity of their family constellations, but very much feeling loved and protected within those families. Also their experiences of public homophobia, within churches, the media, schools and health services. And there are experiences of private homophobia as well within uh, extended family and social circles. Their own experiences of coming out as children of LGBT parents and the significant support that they've had from family, friends, the LGBT community and progressive schools. And then finally their sense of solidarity with future generations of children. The research is child-centred and it's grounded in the international human rights commitments which the Irish state has made um, in Europe and at the United Nations, particularly the rights to family life, to privacy and also participation. And this orientation of our research is an important shift from the four decades of international research which has been undertaken that has evidence that LGBT people are fit parents. In the past, children have been mainly reached through research with their parents, and their lives have been framed and interpreted with regard to societal and parental concerns, for example, to do with, with custody arrangements. So to talk a bit about legal recognition, referring to the Voices of Children research, the Ombudsman for Children has stated that the, quote, lack of recognition and adequate legal protection is very keenly felt and a source of concern and frustration to children of lesbian and gay parents, unquote. They experience in commonplace and everyday ways, as well as at times of crisis within their lives, that their central family relationships with parents, siblings, grandparents, aunts and uncles are unrecognised and pathologised. And this leads to vulnerability, social stigma and discrimination. The choices of the government to deny these children legal protection within adoption and civil partnership legislation during the past year has, in the advice of the Ombudsman for Children, risked the Irish state violating both the European Convention on Human Rights Act and the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. And this quote illustrates very clearly how children of LGBT parents understand the government's denial of their human rights. So to speak about public homophobia, there was a strong awareness within the group that they are used within homophobic public debate as a reason to argue against the legal recognition of same-sex relationships. The Voices of Children group spoke of living in a society in which the parenting that they receive is presented as flawed, second-rate, risky or inherently damaging. And the children find such commentary to be irritating, distressing and disempowering. 
Such homophobic public debate speaks of children of LGBT, LGBT parents speculatively. What if they had children? Thus denying that these children are a generational reality in Ireland. The Ombudsman for Children has stressed that the legal recognition is not a hypothetical problem, but a very real issue. And this assertion speaks to the importance of shifting the research policy and public agenda from defending LGBT people's right to parent, because international research has created that, that evidence base, to finding out what supports and celebrates these children's lives. This study reports a wide range of encounters with public homophobia, from this kind of unforeseen and shocking experience when a child went to a wedding um, in religious spaces, both, both Protestant and Catholic, to homophobic journalism, and also to invisibility and collusion in everyday settings such as schools and health services. To, so to speak to the experience of schooling, Reflecting on their schooling, the Voices of Children group spoke of a number of different issues. Firstly, the absence of any form of representation of families who deviate from the kind of norm that's described in, in this quote. For example, the absence of representation in books or pictures around their schools. Also, the lack of recognition for their family relationships. So uh, some of the groups spoke about um, their non-biological parent not being able to bring them home from school when they were sick. Also, principals and class teachers' failure to address the homophobia of other children and, and their parents. Um, and in one example, a child felt unable to talk about her mother's death because her teacher had repeatedly failed to challenge the homophobia of other students and school felt an unsafe place for her to be out about that experience in her family. And then also teaching a non-inclusive curriculum or only teaching about LGBT issues in subject ghettos like social, personal and health education. The examples that we have from liberal, progressive, um, supportive schools, which Christine and Connor are going to talk about, really demonstrate that these kind of um, pra homophobic practices are choices that schools make regarding their ethos, their policies, their curriculum and their staff training because it isn't a uniform experience, and I think it's important to say that. In particular, the group considered that the Catholic Church's continued control of the education sector was a direct cause of discrimination that they experienced. So to move on to the health sector. The group had no positive experiences of health services. They described experiencing homophobia at each stage of the life course, from birth through serious illness to death. And this homophobia included who was recognised as their own next of kin when they themselves were ill, but also the lack of recognition for their family relationships during health crises. I've already said we only had a group of, of 11, and yet within that very small group, they had experienced being denied access to a dying parent, Healthcare professionals privileging the preferences of homophobic members of extended biological families over the wishes of the immediate LGBT family, and also services failing to have adequate placement policies for when a child's biological parent was unwell. I'm just going to conclude then by returning to one of the first quotes that, that I used um, to see how it continues. We're going to have that up for the rest of the uh, presentation, but I suppose what I would like to conclude with is that legal recognition for children of lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgendered parents is essential, and it is a human right. And as we can see from this quote, the children know it is their human right.